Dialogue 8. Rude Awakenings. God, you have given me a gift that is grim and terrible, and a task that requires I go against my own nature. I am a man of many fears, weak, afflicted, foolish, and ignoble. I am ill at ease among the people and contented only in the solitary solace of the inner chambers or the uninhabited places. I am zealous for the way of the hermit, monks and nuns I envy. In truth, I am sometimes jealous of the wealthy among my countrymen, if only for the freedom they have to seclude themselves and reside in the lonely regions of the earth. Yet you have called me to be a teacher of peoples and nations, to give them your word, and in so doing, bring down the wrath of my neighbors and the scrutiny of the mighty and the learned, and indeed become the enemy to the ministers and priests of your elder covenants. Where may I run? Where may I hide myself? How can I maintain the anonymity you first asked of me? You have made me to be alone and given me the introvert soul that I might hear you and become your scribe. Yet this very nature makes me worthless as a preacher and useless as an apostle of your word. The eyes of the beast and the apostate, the harlot and the vanities are everywhere in the land, and their ears are intent for news of my actions. Though my only sword is the pen and my only power is rhetoric, still they will my destruction. God, by your spirit, I can see into the hearts of men and discern the darkness there within. You have revealed to me the hypocrisies and the errors of my own race, the terrible secrets that hide in the savage hearts of fallen angels and their Nephilim offspring. You have made injustice and irreverence a woeful pain to my innermost being. This drives me onward, a fire that cannot be quenched and a pain that cannot be soothed away. Yet I myself am but a sinner and an outcast, who is unwelcome in the homes of the holy and the righteous. Murder, perversion, domination, prideful vanities, and monstrous fears and hatreds lurk in the hearts of men, for they are in the likeness of their fathers and mothers in aerial places. I have looked upon soldiers and peace officers as if upon heroes of old and knights of an elder time, and I have seen my boyhood idealisms dashed to pieces upon the rocks of reality. As these same take bribes and go astray into all manner of abominations and corruptions, engaging in tyrannies of every frame, I have looked upon the faithful wife and the upright husband only to see there within them hidden sins of fornication and adultery, lusts and appetites for the profane and the desire for all that is temporal and unclean. I have looked upon the crusading politician and the idealistic reformers among the nations and have thought, here at last is someone who gets it, only to have every hope dashed in the light of actuality, as their secret crimes are revealed and their perversions of justice and flesh come into the light. I have looked and enjoyed many movies and heard many songs only to understand and perceive of subtle agendas and threads of meaning that most overlook and cannot unweave, which are at odds with your expressed will and all that is decent and upright. Is there anything pure left to us? Is there anything holy that remains unstained when neither the marriage bed nor cradle remains untainted? Is there any who comprehend or witness these things that are plainly beheld by the eyes of the angel within me? Rescue me. Rescue your remnant swiftly. We are drowning in the sea of madness from which the beast has risen to cheers of welcome from man. We are imprisoned within the borders of Babylon with nowhere left to run from her scheming seductions. Eight entered the ark of Noah. Surely there are eight among the throngs who are worthy of exception. I have fled to the mountains and the crevices therein, and have called upon the rocks to cover me from the face of the beast, and have heard the mountains reply, Shall we defy our God and hide you from what the God who created us has in mind for you, O little son of twilight spirit? 
I have sought death, and death has fled from me. And indeed he has mocked me with laughter to my very face, saying, God has covered you with his shadow. His seal is upon your forehead. So what then can I do for you? At rest I sat and listened to a voice of song from among the daughters of men, a voice that I had loved. And I was soothed until your spirit came and laid to waste my illusions. She sings of her love for another woman and the struggle to win a maiden away from her lawful husband. She mourns the bisexual division within the heart of her lesbian partner. It revealed to my shock. I listened further and sought to overlook and ignore this insight as perhaps misplaced, but your spirit persisted. She sings a lament against the treatment for her mental illness, mourning the loss of her selfish and self-destructive mania. The meaning was made clear, and I saw that evil hides in beauty, and that the siren's bitter intents are hidden within the sweetest lullabies. You leave me with no refuge beyond your aeons, and no respite beyond your words, O God. Is this by design, or is it simply the time in which I reside? I am as a minister sent to the prison to teach the inmates, locked up inside the prison with them, and suffering imprisonment's degradations as if a criminal also. I did not fall. I did not choose to leave behind your living life for this wicked world and its unclean pleasures. Yet I am made to endure its nastiness and feel its taint upon me century after century and lifetime after lifetime. Where, O oh Lord, can we flee? Where is there any safe place to be found? I will be dead and freed before a refuge is established in your names and ways. So for me there is no safe haven and no rest for my weary spirit until the day of my death. In submission to your will I bend my knees and before you my heart is lain. To your will I have surrendered a sliver of my own free will. So use me as you see fit. Dispose of me according to your good bidding. Do as you wish with me, my God, for I am nothing apart from you, and my very existence was made for this reason. Yet you have not asked me to like it. You have not demanded that I reside among the swine dogs of the earth with a smile or glad song in my heart, but merely to carry out the tasks you have deemed necessary. So I shall give full vent to my laments and full voice to my morning songs. Let them rise into heaven until you hear me, my God, upon your throne, so far above this prison plain of woes, in hopes of the day when you shall reach down and bear me out from beneath this veil of tears. Complain as you will, but keep putting one foot in front of the other. March on, march on, child of heaven. Those who love the world are bound to it, and those who ache for heaven shall find it at the end of their day's labors. Where your heart is, there also shall your soul and spirit reside forever. What you love is what you serve, and what you serve, especially when it is not easy to do so, is what you become in the day when all are compensated by their gods. Idols are nothing, and so repaying meaningless service with what they have to give. The gods of the world are the eaters of souls, and so they reward their faithful with what they love most more of the world and its treasures. But you, O oh shadow of heaven, will find what you seek and what you most love, waiting for you at the end of the tunnel, if you can but pay the price for admittance into your Elysium, which is the work of one final lifetime. So be it, my God. Your will and wisdom far exceed my pitiful faculties. And who am I but what you have made me to be, for your purpose and your means. Amen and Amen.